and welcome. This is another session of Kujo Sound and uh, Game Audio Talk. This is my third and final game of the Daddio series. I know the first one is not talked about because uh, I don't know how to get the build, but this is a Mother's Inferno. Um, after the previous game that we made, which was Razul in the previous video, um, Razul was made out of a say out of a concept of let's be artful and express something and so on um, but with this one a mother's inferno we decided to go full on in regards to how are we going to make a game that will really show that we had total creative freedom to do something um, the director of this game was um, David Adler, David Adler um, who did a fantastic job on the direction here we we decided to me and him had some good conversations about that let's let's go full on uh mess things up um try everything that's totally unheard of and so on um so this here is just the menu there is a tiny as you can tell probably um a little bit of a whenever the the effect of the logo moving then there's a small sound playing this is a simple play event in unity so let's hear english and danish and of course we're gonna go with english the game is about a mother she's in a train her son is taken away from her and she has to find her son that's that's about it the train is, of course, demonic and drives into hell, and there's full of vaginas and Hitlers and everything all over the place. But that's a that's a different story. Let's let's go to hell. Well, maybe you should explain the controls here. The controls are WASD keys. You stab with the left click and grab with the right click. So whenever you go to a door, you need to right click and move the door uh, manually. Um, and let's let's go here. The introduction here, it's just a train, it's the sound of um, some recordings I found of a train and some trains recorded at the Copenhagen Central Station. Um, the mother is the uh, mocap character, the mocap uh, artist, no, the actress that we used to do the mocap. We had a microphone on her record all the movement that she had, so I edited those out so that every time she breathes or does something, then it's... it's um, it really is the the sound of her actual movement. Um, can walk around the train here. The footsteps are hard coded to their reverb because uh, back then we had some issues with the 3D emitters. So we have this floor material here. This is just basic floor material. It registers every time she takes a step in the animation, as you can. Uh, see in one of my unity series about how to do that and every time it does so it just checks for the tag so this giant this whole car is mapped with a, um, a collider which tells you that you are now in the regular floor um, the regular floor area which means that whenever it plays a step it plays the regular floor you could have multiple of these colliders so you could have you could have um, a regular floor and water um, active at the same time it would play any of the of the true values whenever it would throw the play event at it so we had lots of these inter like interruptions going on um, kind of like just to show how things are as you can see here planet Hitler I also think there is a moon outside anyway one of the things that we discussed a lot was that we wanted the experience to be that when you're in the car the train car the um, the sound of the, the train should be kind of ordinary but once you open the door it's really hell outside so let's try here as you can see hell is already coming down on us and we have planet Hitler yay not that we think it was a good thing. It's just, it's, uh... Now here you can see there's some glass shards on the floor. We need to pick one of those up. 
It's when we're stepping on them. You hear the sound of the glass shard that we're stepping on it. And that's actually, there is a collider on the entire train car saying that we are in, uh, that we are in regular floor. And right here, there is still glass. So it plays both glass and the other one. And it's just a random container, basically. So let's pick up a glass shard. The uh, interruptions that you see with the graphics where it scrolls in between and there is this, this child who yells, it's just a, a graphic and every time that one is activated, it plays just that one sound. It's just a basic play of it. Let's go here. This is Virgil. He's our guide. He's gonna tell us what to do. So let's stop my sorrow without torment. We grab his head and cut, his, cut it off with a glass shard. Yes, I'm your guy through hell. All right. Poor planet Hitler. We're entering a tunnel now. Let's go in here. There's a giant chicken. And every time we go through one of these doors, it registers that the door is now open, and then it registers when the door closes again. Right here in front of the door, there is a collider which registers that you have now gone into, as you can tell, the ambience in this car is different from this car here. So every time you go into this collider, it registers that you, you have now entered this room, it stops the other, the uh, other ambience and starts playing this ambience. This chicken here is made out of uh, basic, basic single events, whatever he takes a step. And then it's just basically me saying whatever, uh, edited out into multiple monster sounds. Every time he takes a step, it plays this. So actually this is a very, very short sound. This is repeated over and over and over again, which makes the sound of the chicken. So let's grab his head and cut it off as Virtue just showed us in the past. He hit us. You can't die, but you can sort of be neutralized or what's it called? Be knocked over and you have to play it again. So let's let's grab his head. Here. There we go. Head is off. So he disappears. So now the, the train ambience is, is different again from the other car. Um, it registered that we entered this car, and that's it. Actually, there's a buck here. I think the door is open. But... It's been a couple of years, so I can't really fix it. Now let's uh, let's grab him, jump on his back over the river sticks. There's a bunch of water steps. The water's also marked as a footstep collider. So the train cars, as you can see, become more and more weird here. It's a giant bull, deep demonic bull in this area. Now, in this game, uh, just as in my Unity series, there is uh, this um, event system. So every time the jump sound, we're supposed to jump on the back of this bull and stab its heart out. When that jump sound is played, it throws out a global event that other sounds listens to, like the background sound and other things, so that I use that event to trigger that uh, it muffles certain sounds, it lowers the volume of, the, of other sounds, and then it fades them back up. We'll see. Oh, there he is! Oh! So he's gonna run into the wall, and we... Beat the pitch down and the, the fade up again, and the the high pass filter and the low pass filter all does that again. Um, the volume does it of certain sounds. The same thing when you die, it just lowers the volume of certain things. It's like a very brute, brute 
missed it again. It's a very, very hard-coated compressor, but it gets the job done. The monster sounds there from a library that the school bought at the time, uh, which are cool, combined with some other sounds that I did myself, uh, mixed together. You stab it three times to have it die. Breathing is hard coded, so whenever she jumps up, it lowers the pitch and the volume of all these other sounds. But then it also plays a special, um, special breathing sound of her, so that it sort of like get the impression that she actually jumped on this bull. We're in a giant church. These train cars become more and more insane as you move on. Still have Planet Hitler out there. All right, so. So the reverb on these footsteps here, it's, it's much louder and much longer than the other footsteps, and they, that's hard-coded into the asset. Um, this area just has a, a collider which triggers um, a footstep just, just called reverb footstep. Now we're in this church, and lots of artsy stuff going on. There's a giant bat hanging from the ceiling here. You can hear it's breathing. The breathing sound is very interesting. Um, I sampled something from one of my favorite pieces of music. It has a very metallic sound. Uh, didn't use that as the breathing, but I used that with a VST plugin called Kefir. Um, key, uh, K E fear as in first impulse response um, and I use that it's, it only takes like one second impulse responses but I use that metallic sound on top of my own breath to create this sort of like metal lung breathing of this character of the giant bat hanging from the ceiling here we came to this part where we wanted to, what can we do in, a, in, a, in an FPS game, in a first person game that has not been done before or something like that? Um, we wanted to hurt the character. The character should hurt herself, like stab her own eyes out in first person mode. So glad this isn't in VR. VR wasn't a thing back then. So once you click the left mouse button, she's gonna stab her own eyes out. What? How this is made is that, um, there's, of course, some thuds and some impact sounds, but it's actually um, a cup of tea that I had. I drank it and left it to, um, to dry for a couple of days so that the top layers in the glass of the tea leaves would be super dry and crisp, and the ones at the bottom would still be kind of wet and soaked. I then took my ADK microphone, um, had this really cheap... Um, I don't remember if it's an Omni or a Cardioid, but it's a, a long shotgun style one. Just jammed it in there uh, a couple of times so that it would sound like the crisps were breaking, but then once you hit the, um, the soaked part, it would go like, like crisp, crisp into it. Um, recorded that at the, the Institute of Electroacoustic Music where I was a student at the time. Um, I was there in one of their studios. Most of the other sounds in this game are is in this game are actually recorded in a tiny, tiny bathroom. Um, that was the recording facility I had during the production of this game, which is fine because then I just took advantage of that I have this natural reverb for everything I do. So none of these sounds are recorded in a silent room. All of these they take advantage of that everything just needs reverb and more reverb. Um, got a lot of frequency control, but. Yeah. Anyway, get ready to stab your own eyes out. The other one. And the rest of the game is actually in inverted colors. Yay. Like I said, we wanted to decide to like push boundaries and be a little more artsy about it. So you can't see this door unless you have inverted colors. So Planet Hitler, inverted colors. Virtual is throwing up. Plus the 
these train sounds. This is, I think this is a stop sound from the Copenhagen Central Station. I was commuting at the time with the train from Copenhagen to Aarhus during my studies. Uh, it was a, bit, a three hour train ride each way. It was a bit long to go at 5 a.m. in the morning to then have two or three hours of school and then go back. But uh, all my work was in Copenhagen, so I, it had to be done. So now we are a very mysterious train car. As you can hear, there's a breathing sound of the character. It's also part of the introduction screen of the splash screen where it says, find your son. It's a breath sound of the character, which is stretched like almost to infinity with um, ill-formed stretch. Um, you can, it's the one that made a, they made a, a VST called Glitch in Glitch 2. Um, really awesome tool uh, but I used the, the stretch function only which meant that I could manually say how much I wanted to stretch and it's it's really cool really cool I use it practically for everything I do I guess um, good work there ill formed here we are walking in the rain gotta find a snail here we can hold on to and then be dragged across the river Styx, as Virgil showed us. See, we can't cross it here, and the door is over there. It's breathing in me. It's me breathing in a bathroom. And all the soaky sounds of the snail moving, that's a mandarin that I was eating, also in the same bathroom. to the snail here. Now we're <laughs> nice little hanging here from the from the butt of the snail. So let's get to it. About to approach the final level. Wish me luck. All the atmospheric synthy stuff in the background that's usually not massive, but FM8 and a couple of other synths from the Native Native Instrument Complete package, which I had at the time. Um, still have it, but Here we are dropped off. Let's go to the door here. More inverted colors. They're actually non-inverted whenever <laughs> there are these flashbacks. We're being reminded that you can grab monsters, stab them in the back, and do other things with them, uh, which is kind of like the culmination of the final boss that we're about to meet here. The final boss will have like everything we had to do until now, but we'll have that. So holding on, stabbing in the back, stabbing in the belly, stab to just do hell, really. Again, the reverb of the first step is hard coded. And this is, I also have to say that this is done in Unity 4, it's not Unity 5. So we had no way of controlling mixture snapshots and so on. Well, we probably did, but that would require a lot of scripting and we didn't have that. So here we are, the final boss. It's a swan, multiple arms, swan, demon. It's pregnant, you need to stab it in the belly, you need to find your son, and I do not encourage hurting anyone or any pregnant woman whatsoever, not even a pregnant swan. But this is a game where you need to live through all the demons that you meet. It's probably the main character's inner demons or similar, like, you can do metaphor yourself. To do each of them three times, so now we've been stabbing it in the back.
incomplete. Artsy. <laughs> so let's go in here and see if we can find our son. There he is. PewDiePie played through this game. He called him Timmy. Uh, I think maybe we should then call him Tommy and yell for him. There you go. Thanks to everybody who was part of this production. Um, David Adler, Rune Hilbert, Jens, Simon, Simon, Gonzalo, Marcus, Acne, Alexandra, Lukas, Quion. Alexandra, Michael, Lee, Christophe, Christian, me, and Jesper Knusen. Jesper Knusen, who's now a good friend of mine, along with the rest of the team. I see them not on a regular basis, but quite often. A lot of people helped with this production, and the feedback that we got from the school was that this was art. They didn't really want to comment on it, but who knows? Um, that's how the sounds of A Mother's Inferno were made. Uh, and some of the logic systems that we made. Uh, basically, if you go over my Unity series, you will basically see most of how they were all done in terms of sending global events, making sure that things can can um, be affected by filters and then come back up over, over time, um, and, base, and the basic um, colliders whenever you enter and exit rooms. Um, it's really interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe on Patreon if you like to pay me for the work that I do. I'm not saying that you have to, but it would be nice. Uh, thanks to everybody who played this game. I'll throw a link to it in the description so that you can play it if you want. Um, and if you have any questions about the sound design or how anything in this game was made, please throw, please just fire away in the comments or send me an email and we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, yeah. This is, this is also what student games could look like. Um, we're really proud of this production. Actually, it was also nominated and presented at IndieCade, which was, uh, I think it was my first game that ever received any kind of praise outside of our little